Hi guys, putting here with a game for you in my tier 10 German Destroyer, the Z52. Apologize for this little uh, graphical glitch that's about to pop up. Now, General my captain skills are preventative maintenance, priority target, expert marksman, last stand, survivability expert, torpedo reload, superintendent, and of course concealment. Now my modules are protect my main batteries, longer hydro, Faster torpedo reload, protect my engine, faster turning, and of course, concealment. Now, as you see, we uh, are on Bumpy Map Tramp. And I've always been a big fan of the Northern, or the Southern Team to be C, and the Northern Team to be uh, C, or uh, the Southern Team to A and B, and the Northern Team to B and C. No, it doesn't matter however you slice it, usually the fight is always about B. Now, while I'm driving straight to go, while you may think I may be going in C, what I'm going to do is go into B through the top. I think that would be the, I think that's the best option for the guys that spawn in the north, at least for the destroyers, while battleship cruiser go around the uh, island just to kind of protect them a little bit. Now, usually one destroyer from the enemy team will come and contest the cap, and it's usually whoever has the most ships at B at the start usually win it. Now, considering I'm coming in through the top, I'm going to just kind of throw out random torps where most people go to hide uh, behind the little island in B. But, you know, for the most part, a lot of people don't expect that play. A lot of people expect them to go, uh, the, the guys up north, to go to, uh, go to the sea cap. Uh, but, you know, of course, I didn't. While we still have guys going to the sea cap, I obviously want to be. Now, these torps aren't going to hit anything, because as you can see, we are clearly getting the... B cap, and I apologize for the squeaking of my chair that happened uh, a little bit earlier in the video. Now, as you can see, the enemy team is getting A, we are getting B, and the enemy team is getting C. Usually what happens on this map is both teams play for A and B, and who's ever up north, uh, usually ends up just duking it out. I accidentally run into the front destroyer, but I'm just trying to torp this gap here. Now I am trying to make my way to A and help out the team that is, uh, you know, the friendlies that are down there, because as you can see, we don't have a destroyer presence down there. We do have a Des Moines, Who's, you know, radar last. Uh, I do forget off the top of my head. I don't play my Des Moines at all ever since I got the first win in it. But I do believe it lasts uh, 40 seconds. So, for really much for 40 seconds is the length of, you know, anti destroyer there. It's one torpedo does hit the tier 8 British cruiser, which I lovingly refer to as the Edinburgh Bro. Now, you know, getting a flood on, on it doesn't matter, but more importantly is I got damage on him, which forces out uh, the damn calm and his heal. So hopefully if somebody gets a fire, they will take a little bit more of his health. Now, it looks like the guys up north managed to push the guys away from sea. I am just kind of dropping these torps a little preemptively. I know this is the Missouri Raider hitting me. I'm kind of hoping that this guy was in a process or is in a process of slowing down, which is why I sent my torpedoes. I do not know why this gentleman had his radar on. It seemed a little bit of a waste. Because as you can see, I'm still within his radar range, and I'm not being radared. So, for whatever reason, he hit his radar. Maybe it was the one was in a little hidey spot, 
and you know the destroyer could see him to finish him I don't know and as you can see I'm getting lucky with my torps because the Missouri is in a process of now backing up which means goodbye Missouri so we get rid, uh, rid of one powerful ship we also get rid of uh, radar one of their radar cruisers or not cruisers one of the radar ships unfortunately Missouri is not a cruiser and I should know that but our poor Bismarck is taking a pounding now the other thing is we are losing B looks like the uh, bro is taking it I'm just kind of dropping random torps into the smoke cloud now I'm kind of debating whether or not I should tie tail it to the Hindenburg give him smoke or if I need to come back to give these battleships a smoke now what I'm gonna do is actually try to smoke in front of the battleships instead of smoking on them because while this is German smoke some smoke is better than no smoke I was also dropping a smoke like this in hopes that the Bismarck would have turned into me instead of pushing into overwhelming numbers. I was trying to give this guy a safe area to finish doing his turn, but instead this guy just continues to push forward. And I managed to get a single torp hit on something in A. I don't know what it is. Now I probably should have said something in the chat about the Bismarck hey, I'm dropping smoke for you please turn towards me but I don't type fast number two I was hoping the Bismarck would see me coming to him and understand that I'm trying to give him smoke now I don't fully blame him for not expecting it because th this is a random battle and let's face facts how many randoms uh, battles do you really get uh, your destroyers to smoke you since he won't use it, and there's a couple seconds left on it, I will use it to at least try to get a fire going on the Kerfers. Fortunately for me, my first salvo was actually on the Buki, but luckily they were close enough that the shells still came in fairly accurate. I also get lucky in the fact that I did set a fire. Smoke is ending. Bismarck is still coming under... Uh, high pressure set another fire and I'm hoping that uh, you know between these two and our secondary duel that the curve first is just going to let the fires burn or his damage uh, his damn calm is already out or as I will call out in chat uh, if I ever play with you guys is DCP his damage control party now I'm taking a huge risk by dropping torpedoes in front of the Bismarck. But at the same time, I kind of know that I had enough distance to drop the torps in front of the guy. But it's still a huge risk because for whatever reason, I've had my torpedoes just go in. I don't understand directions sometimes and you're gonna see that a lot later on in this replay now I don't exactly want to hit my hydro right now to flush out the uh, carb off because one I'm not within this hydro, I'm not within my hydro range I'm using last known position and my my concealment ring to judge when the best time is number two if I do it and I'm not in smoke, I'm well within the curve for secondary range. I was also kind of using the Montana, who unfortunately burnt down as bait to keep him in smoke. Apologize for my little burp. But with my smoke now back, I can safely smoke up, start shooting this guy, and you know not have to worry about getting hit from the guys from behind I believe my uh, hydro is 5.8 kilometers you can see at 4.5 kilometers so I have a good kilometer of pelting this guy as I get hit with lag 
I knock out this guy's steering, which is actually kind of detrimental to him. Because even if he's running the double steering gears, he's going to turn even slower. Now, I'm not going to waste my time dropping torps on this guy. Because actually, just using my guns is a lot faster. At this point, I really should have been switching to my AP. Dealing with the guy there. I do believe I get a detonation on the guy. Uh, so, you're welcome for the flags. But, you know, if I was using my AP, I would have been doing a little bit more damage. The German AP on these destroyers, I even... On broadside destroyers, is extremely good. Now, of course, we lost sight of where the... Uh, Kerfurst is, so we're not sure if he's pushing my smoke, if he turned to go back with the group. But, as we can see here, he, f he pops up and he's pushing back with the group. Now, the enemy team only have one destroyer. We have all of our destroyers. And I'm starting to feel pretty good about our chances. Uh, the guys at B or at C finally got uh, finally made their way to C. And I apologize for the background noise. I forgot to mute my mic while I did uh, this recording because usually I do the recording and then I do the audio separately to minimize uh, background noise. But unfortunately. It's there, and I apologize for it. Now we see the Kudusov smoke, and then we see another smoke cloud. So we know where the destroyer is. We know where the Kudusov is. Now I'm dropping torps where the guy was last at, and I'm dropping torps and suspecting that he is going to reverse. The other thing is, we see uh, there the smoke cloud in front of me, directly in front of this one, is the gearing smoke. And I'm thinking, yay, USDD smoke. Let me utilize it. Obviously, nobody's been shooting out of it. Hopefully, the torps that were meant for it went somewhere else or have already came and gone. So, I'm just going to, you know, slow down, get in this guy's smoke. I do know that, uh, you know, obviously where he turned is the beginning of his smoke. And, yay, everybody's in smoke. And the only thing I can shoot is out of range. But I'm still going to uh, sit here because, you know what, you just don't know. Nail the Kudus off with three torpedoes. So, there's one more smoke cloud. The enemy destroyer died to, I don't know what, what was going on, but the enemy is out of destroyers. Well, we are not. I move forward because I hear the torpedoes. But the enemy is going to make a very good, smart move. I'm dropping my tor torpedoes on at Des Moines. You know what, if he stays there, whatever, but, you know, of course, the smoke ending, and he's going to move out. Now, as you can see, the enemy are down to one battleship. The rest are cruisers. We are down to one battleship, two cruisers, and the rest destroyers. The enemy is going to make a smart move and follow their curve first pushing up. Now, I decide to start opening up because if I get a fire... I might be able to get this guy's damn comp out. I might be able to get him to shoot at somebody else. Uh, just to take some pressure off of our battleship. Now, I really wish our battleship would have focused on the Moin. Uh, just because it would have helped out all of us smoke cruisers. But I'm laying my smoke down for this Abuki. For this guy to possibly reverse... Uh, you know, stay in a fight without being seen because you can see a plane comes up. I do believe our Zuri was firing at the Hipper. It would have been a lot nicer if he would have realized, you know, it, he's going to go down. And the best target for him, for the team, would have been the Des Moines, actually. Now, luckily for me, something else shoots the... Uh, plane down because I, like a noob, forget to turn my A off and it's still on as we speak. I drop one set on the curve first and then I'm kind of dropping the second set on where I believe the Des Moines is going to come in. I'm going to make some huge mistakes coming here because I kind of panicked and misjudged reload times of consumables. But I realized if we take out the battleship, 
maybe scare these cruisers from making their push. Looks like only one torp is going to hit. The gentleman is burning. So hopefully he's damage cam is already out. Instead of turning and running away like I should have, I decided to try to hold this cap. Now, that is stupid for multiple reasons. One, 7.4 kilometers away from a Des Moines, whose radar goes out to 11, or not 11, to 10 kilometers. Two, there's an Ibuki backing up Des Moines. So, not only do I have to contend with the Des Moines' uh, extreme rate of fire, his radar, I have to deal with the high alpha from an Ibuki, along with the high fire chance. Now, really, you're bust but in this situation just run hit your speed boost but no what do i do i need to turn to trap my torpedoes i should have just kept running straight there's no way these guys cannot suspect my torpedoes to be coming and yay more fires more crap knocked out and where the hell did those torpedoes go i'm confused and why those torps went that way i could have swore my indicator was showing them, uh, you know, not the indicator that tells me where I should launch them, but where my actual torp drops is going to go, was actually facing those two guys. So, after that happened, I'm like, well, I need to redeem myself. I know the guy's radar is on cooldown. I'm going to chill here and try to torp these two gentlemen. Luckily, the... Gearing finishes off the hipper. But as you can see, you know, the Ibuki's not going to last long. He's going to get focused down. I slow down, hit my smoke, and great. The guy spotting dies. So I'm just dropping my torps in where I anticipate the Des Moines go. Going to take a shot. And instead of being smart and intelligent like I should be, you know, I'm going to sit here in my smoke while I let a Des Moines push my position. Even good players make mistakes. That's the difference between great players and good players. Great players don't make mistakes like this. Or if they do, they usually get outplayed by another great player. But I completely screw it up. And just by sitting here, the only smart thing I did was hit my Hydro for the Torps. But of course, I knew Torps weren't going to hit me because of the island here. The Des Moines takes out the one destroyer he could see. And then, of course, any second, he's going to hit radar. And this is going to be the end of my lovely life. I should have started moving a lot sooner and just tried to defend... Uh, see from a distance and of course I'm going to make another classic mistake. Drop my torps. I do the widespread in hopes that the torps may eventually hit something. Now, we have two caps to their one. The Buki's low health. The uh, what is it? The premium Kagero is extremely Low health, or is is it just I forget which destroyer it is. But for the most part, nope. It is it a gearing? Okay, so it is the gearing. So no, the gearing did die. There's our last destroyer. Uh, which yes, it is the premium uh, keg. I don't ask me to pronounce Japanese names. We'll just call it the pretty pink one. All this guy has to do is lift. There's no way the enemy can catch up. We have the points lead. Even if they stop points from coming in, there's under a minute. They can't make up the time. So, all this guy has to do is just run to the border and we win. I'm not going to subject you guys to that. We are just going to go check out the post-battle results. 144,000 damage. Four ships sent to the bottom of the sea, two devastating strikes, and with that, guys, number one on the team with base experience of 2,200, 
even with the two colossal mistakes I did make. Here's the money screen. It is what it is. I don't know how much you guys care about it, but here is the screen. 34,000 damage coming from my main guns. All of that high explosives. 79,000 coming from the 9 torpedo hits. And between the fires and flood, 30,000 damage. I really do hope you guys enjoy this replay. I do hope you learn from my mistake of playing foolishly around radar ships. The, it was clearly my fault uh, for me dying. And it was a good play by the Des Moines. We really do enjoy all the replays you guys send in. The email is in the description down below. We do appreciate all and all the support you guys do give us. Remember to compliment good teamwork, good team play. We are quick to report, slow to compliment. Please hit that like and subscribe button and have yourselves one heck of a great day.